So some of you may remember this robot I built a while ago. Um, it's a copy of a Sandsara robot, um, which is uh, for using a little steel ball and a magnet. So the steel ball sits on top of a plate and the magnet sits below and the magnets draw the steel ball around and it draws a pattern in sand. So it can spin around and draw all kinds of pleasing circles and shapes and, and blend them together and do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so it's got two steppers and some belts and arms and such. Um, I put this project on pause a while ago for no particularly good reason, uh, just sort of lost interest. I'm looking to pick it up again at some point. Um, but um, Josh from Hackerspace Brisbane uh, suggested I look into a different linkage mechanism, uh, which I found variously uh, referred to as five arm, a five bar, or a pentagon robot. Um, so this is how it works. You've got two stepper motors um, giving you two degrees of freedom and it moves this end effector around in a XY plane. Um, so there's a stepper in the back, a stepper in the front. The stepper in the back is set up higher with an arm that comes out and then the lower stepper has an arm of the same distance. Uh, for what I'm looking at currently, uh, for the model that I'm, I'm looking to play with, um, the smaller arm is the same length as the distance between the steppers. That's not necessarily, uh, tr th that doesn't have to be the case, um, but for this model it is, and I don't think it makes a massive difference on the limitations of this design. Um, so you see it's able to position these two steppers um, anywhere in the circle, caveat, uh, and that is the linkages bring the end effector to wherever it needs to go. Um, so the high stepper can rotate fully 360 all the way around. Uh, the end of its short arm is able to pass over the top of the lower stepper. The lower stepper doesn't have that freedom. Um, it can't spin all the way around because its arm will crash into the higher stepper. And I think that's a fatal problem um, because you'll notice there's no ping pongs on the far side. Um, and what I want to work out is whether it's possible for this kinematic layout to move between any two points anywhere in the area in a straight line. I don't think it can. Um, might be wrong, but I built this... Ow! Christ! This is the second time I've done that. Um, so I built this little model here out of paddle pop sticks and nails and stuff and glued it down to my bench. Um, so you've got two steppers here, you've got the end effector up here, and you've got these two free linkages here. Uh, I've got a little nut under this one to raise that arm up a little bit higher. Not a perfect model, but it's good enough. I just snip these nails off and pin them over to hold it down a little bit. Um, so you'll see it's able to twist these twist these arms here and that moves this around. The, the, the um, trigonometry, the kinematics for this are not too complicated. They're a little bit fiddlier than the other robot but not too much so. Um, so you'll see it's possible to uh, swing this end effector all the way around in a circle this way no worries. Uh, this particular model here would get stuck if we continued to try because these um, hinges here would clash. That's not a problem on the actual device, that's just because this is a, not a non-ideal model. So it's able to draw that boundary just fine. However, when we get around to this side and we try to swing through this perimeter here, this arm crashes. Um, now, in this model, as I mentioned before, the short arm is the same distance as the arms between the, the distance between the steppers. Now that's not necessarily the case. This arm could be shorter, uh, which would let this arm swing through over to over to this side. No worries. However, this arm would uh, there's no way of getting out of this clashing with that. Um, it's it, it's an intractable problem. This this arm here needs to be where it is on the z-axis in order to interact with this joint and this joint and that joint. I think there's no way for this design to, because uh, once it gets to here, this axis, this degree of freedom is essentially taken out of the picture, and then you've got control from here, you're able to continue to swing around, but then this starts to get caught inside this angle. As this angle here closes up, it's pinching in on that um, that stepper, and you'll you'll run out of motion there. You'll you won't be able to draw the circle around the perimeter. You're only now able to draw a circle around this part here. So your, your movement gets truncated. 
and uh, yeah, you can't do it. It pulls tighter and tighter and tighter and swings in towards the center. You end up drawing like a spiral. So it would be great if this design fit the bill, and for some stuff it does, like that pick and place looking thing in the video. That's, it's an ideal use case for that. But for a, a system where you need full X or Y movement over the full area, moving in a direct line between any two points, I don't think this fits the bill. Um, I don't think that's due to my model or my thinking, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. Um, obviously, it is able to, to get, if you get to here, it is able to swing around and pass through the center and then get over to there. So it can, it can get from A to B, but it can't do so in a straight line in some, some domains, uh, which is unfortunate because this would have been a lot simpler to build. Okay, bye-bye.